Today, I'm going to show you how to calculate the current carrying capacity of a cable using the standard affectionately known as 3008. What have you got for us, Tilly? Thanks, Kev. Today, we're going to be working through this example that I found in an exam. Determine the current carrying capacity of a three-phase 16 square mil multi-core copper XLPE cable, which is installed on a cable ladder, touching another cable. The ambient temperature of the room does not rise above 35 degrees Celsius. Now, there's a bit going on here, so I've drawn a little picture so that you can get a good idea of how it's installed. Fantastic, Tilly, thanks. I detected a bit of an accent in your voice. Are we going to be using the New Zealand standard or are we going to be using the Australian standard? Don't be ridiculous, Kev. New Zealand is cold and cables there can carry more current. In Australia, we use ASNZS 3008.1.1. Now, we're also dealing with a multi-core cable that has XLPE insulation. So the conductor temperature can rise up to 90 degrees without damaging the insulation. And the ambient temperature is no hotter than 35 degrees. As you can see from table one, XLPE cable can withstand a conductor temperature of 90 degrees. Table three has an explanation of what all the symbols mean in the rest of the uh, current carrying capacity tables. Here on table three, brackets one, you will find this symbol, which means all of these scenarios down here, spaced from a wall with at least 30% of the cable diameter spaced between the wall and the cable, supported on ladders, racks, perforated cable tray, cleats, hangers, inside a switchboard or other enclosure, suspended from a catenary or self-supporting cable. So this is us. We are looking at a cable on a ladder. So looking at column four, we can see that it tells us that the current carrying capacity cables for this particular scenario are table 13 and table 14. The derating factors that will be taken into account for this situation will be on table 24 as stated here. So let's go to table 13. Following the current carrying capacity table 13 will result in conductor temperatures of around about 75 degrees. But our cable is XLPE and can tolerate temperatures up to 90 degrees. Table one shows us that XLPE is good for 90 degrees. Table 14 deals with cables with a higher conductor temperature, anything up to 90 degrees. So here's that symbol that we found in table three. So we can run down this column until we find 16 mil cable and we find that it's good for 88 amps. And that would be the case if this cable was run on its own, on a rack, spaced from a wall. But it's not. It's next to another cable. Table 24 is for derating multi-core cables that are sitting on a cable ladder. So if we're using a cable ladder and there are two cables touching each other, we will have to multiply the current carrying capacity of that cable by the derating factor. And in this case, for two cables next to each other on a cable ladder, that will be a derating factor of 0.87. So looking at the current carrying capacity of our cable, which was 88 amps, times the derating factor of 0.87 equals 76.56 amps. Now remember that our cable is also in a situation where the temperature never went over 35 degrees. So this means that the current carrying capacity of the cable can be uprated because of the cooler temperatures. Table 27.1 should be able to help us out with that one. So 90 degree cable in an ambient temperature of 35 degrees gives us an uprating factor of 1.05 which means that we can multiply the current carrying capacity of our cable by 1.05, taking our 76.56 to 80 amps. Now this was a little bit more complicated than the sort of thing that you would normally find in the real world. Nevertheless, it is a realistic scenario. I wanted to show you how to find the current carrying capacity of a cable and then work out what happens when you have multiple rating or derating factors combined on the same cable. 
I hope this was useful. I'll see you on the flip side.